as we are doing right now. I could record my session as I'm going to have engagement with you right now and upload it on Sakai. And I could have multiple videos which could have covered three to four weeks uploaded within just one week. And I'll give you timelines to um, watch them complete certain tasks as well as completing quizzes. I, I do that quite frequently and all of that will add up to your continuous assessment. It is one credit hour. And so we will accomplish as much as we can as far as this course is concerned. Um, there was a misunderstanding in the beginning when I got enrolled on Sakai. I think I indicated that. But I don't think I, I could entertain your reaction on your WhatsApp page, so I had to excuse myself. I, bet I really don't stay on the same WhatsApp group with my students. That's why the TAs will engage with you. So um, I noticed that some of you who came in early belong to that um, Sakai platform I was originally enrolled on, which still has barely 20 something students. But then again, somebody privately indicated the other group, which she formed part of. And then I checked with UGCS and that place has over 190 or something of you. So I guess you are in one department or college. I don't know how to describe you guys. However, you are all required to take this course under B. AHS 113. So yeah, all of these things had to be ironed out in your own interest. Besides, it's just one credit hours, um, one credit hour, and it will not change much on your 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 GP. I can assure you, it it will have not much significance. Um, if it was three credit hours, then you 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 will be much more hot. But you will never know. So you just may want to take it serious um, to be on the safer side. Um, this meeting is to engage and acquaint ourselves with each other and then have our first engagement also in the Zoom live session. Um, I think the, the, the Sakai page that has about, nine, about 190 of you, you might have noticed that some portions of your menus are not visible. Uh, the rest of you in the other page, I'll gradually move there and then organize your page at, at, accordingly. Um, please synchronize your UG emails with your handset, with your PCs, whatever, so that uh, you don't miss out in any official communication. Send you messages through the teaching assistance is just um, luxury, it's, it's not mandatory. But from your emails, yes, I will have um, an electronic trail of any engagement I've had with my students and um, it will remain on record for history purposes and for whatever reason it may be needed. So be checking your emails from time to time or better still synchronize it with your handsets so that you don't miss out in any information. You don't need to wait for somebody to tell you anything as far as the course is concerned. You'll get it from the horse's own mouth. Yes, so um, that is just about it. Do you have any question for me before we take off for today's session? If you have any question for me, raise your hand. Don't raise your hand in your camera. I've already indicated the ways and means you can raise your hand. If you have any question, you can ask me. No question. Okay, no question. I see nobody raising their hand. Some of you still have your cameras turned off. I don't know why. Okay, there's one hand up. Um, um, Josephine Mensa. Okay, you can speak. Let's hear you. Hello, sir. Um, please, good evening. Yes, good evening. Sir, please, um, since you've confirmed that UGCS has about 1,000 of our names um, enrolled on Sakai, please, would it be necessary again for us to go to UGCS to get enrolled again onto the course? Okay, so um, let me respond to that quickly. If you can see BAHS 113 
on your Sakai platform. As long as you can see that on your Sakai platform, there's no need to go back to GGCS. Only students who do not see it on their platform, whether you are in the, um, how do I even describe it? Those of you in the, I think the only difference in your label is some I and then some one and some three. These are the only two platforms I have been assigned. So if you are not on any of these two, then you have to go and identify yourself to the UGCS and then they will enroll you. So that is just to answer that, that question. Yes, else you have no business to go and do anything there. Initially, I was included to the platform which had only 20 something students. And on your WhatsApp platform, you were soaring beyond 100. It didn't make sense to me. And the mode of communication between myself and my students is the official, um, what do you call it? The learning management system. And so that is why we couldn't agree on some few things. But like I indicated, that has sort of been resolved now. So if you don't have any of the BHS 113 or whatever appearing on your Sakai, then you have to go to UGCS and let them sort that out for you. Some people still have their cameras turned off. I don't understand why. All right, any more questions? Anybody with any other question? Just three more minutes. Any other question before I take off? My presentation was supposed to be in 10 minutes. You have five minutes to ask any question with regards to the course. I will include um, the course description and other details all on the Sakai. And um, my Sakai platform may not be the traditional one you are familiar with. A few customizations I'll be implementing there. And so you may have to adjust quickly when you are when the when the site is updated and then um, get access to what you need to get access to. Don't miss out on deadlines. Um, I don't give second chances when you miss out in assignment and quizzes. Don't even come to me and ask, say, this and that reason, network issue, um, I couldn't make it. No, I don't have time for that. I'm sorry, at all, I don't. So let me mention it here and now to you, okay? You'll be disappointed to walk to my office and I'll hand you over a seat. We see the problem and I'll ask you to walk away and I'll do nothing about it. So don't even bother so that um, you know, it doesn't create a friction between you and me. You are all handsome and beautiful. Let's keep it that way. I hope that is fine. Great. Any question for me? I have two more minutes. Yes, just remember again. When we finish, you will unmute yourself. I've asked you to unmute, speak up. Um, say, yes. Please, um, are we going to have a, um, and please when? Is that what is put out to you? Is that what matters most to most of you? Sir, please win. Okay, so um, why is your Sir, pardon. Okay, so um, in response to that question, it's quite interesting you've asked. I have a different approach to my lectures okay it's continuous assessment continuous assessment against exams or quizzes i give more marks to continuous assessment than i give to exams um i beg to differ but those who cramp and pour last minute show i can guarantee even if you get 100 100 in my exam you 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 are filled you have still filled the semester there's no way 40 marks can guarantee you a pass if you ignore continuous assessment. So it's continuous assessment because from whatever you call your IA to my quizzes to other forms of assignment, all add up to form part of your continuous assessment. Every single one of them carries a significant weight. The, the, the assessment that carry the least weight in my assessment is IAs, whatever you are calling your IA and exams. They usually carry the least weight as far as I'm concerned. Of course, they'll push you to, the, to cross the border. So if you are going to probably get a B plus, it will push you to an A. 
but guaranteed if you just pass those ones, it's not enough to let you settle in. I don't work with time frames. My only time frame is when you are due for revision and exams. But between now and that time, the rest of the time is all mine. I'll make sure I give you adequate time to complete one assessment from the other. You don't get to pick which assessment you wish to take serious and what not to take serious. Every one of them is serious. And so the period between now and revision week, take everything that will come serious. Treat IAs as your as seriously as you would with continuing assessment. Give that same attention throughout. I don't take it lightly when you compromise on certain courses. It may be one credit hour, but I may engage you more than you would anticipate as a one credit hour. We may not be meeting as frequent as this, like I indicated. Um, it's going to be periodic. And so um, that is for you to know. The presentation will be in the same fashion as we we'll have today's lesson. There will be demonstrations, there will be interactions. If you have any concerns, you can draw my attention using all the official means. Uh, you can send me a message on Sakai, you can shoot me an email. I will have office hours indicated on the Sakai platform. You can walk into my office and ask questions within those periods. If I have general concerns significantly, you know, considering the number of students, or if I deem it very relevant, I may call for um, a Zoom live audience like we've had right now. And I will not use any extra time, but the time we have all agreed and consented to, to discuss and address those ones so that um, we are generally on the same page. We are here to learn. And so I expect you to um, give that much attention to our engagement as far as the entire semester is concerned. Yes. Right, I've gone past three minutes of my time. Um, I don't need to reintroduce the teaching assistants who are working with me. Since you have already been engaging with them, I have two of them. There's one Oswald and there's one Jamal. Um, if you are struggling to get in touch with me and you feel comfortable engaging with them, feel free to do so. If it's beyond them, they'll definitely forward it to me. They are not going to stomach more than what they can take or what they should. Right. Great. Right. So um, there is a recommended text. Um, I will provide all the links to access those texts. Unfortunately, it's not for free. You can get the resource also available on um, UGCS, as, I mean, um, the university library. It's only a matter of time. They will come, they will. Um, stock, um, stock up with some of these materials as and when they are ready. Um, so the least I can do is provide for you the reading assignments, um, which will comprise details of the slides that we'll be discussing. And I will need to commit to that and then um, everything should be fine. Right, so if there are no further questions, I have 97 students active right now. I hope you have taken notice of them. Right, take all the those without IDs, we we'll ignore them. It should both be name and ID. Somebody's calling him or herself, what, Asa? I don't know who calls him or herself Asa. I don't know, Abeta, what? I, I can't know you by your first name. This, this is an official engagement. Tego, Ezio, whatever your name is, I, I, you should add your ID. Delali, Michael, all of these include your ID add it to your name. If you have not done so, please do so now before you notice that we have marked attendance, you see it on your Sakai, but you are marked zero. You don't come and blame me. I'm repeating myself for the last time. Online sessions are compulsory. And that is why I take it serious. Those of you who have still turned off your cameras. Yes, great. All right, so um, we'll hit the nail on the head for today's session. And then um, we'll make use of the, the last 35 minutes of our time. I don't have much of it myself. Okay, so um, as you may all know, the course is nothing new to you. Um, they have captioned it um, computer studies, introduction to computer studies. It's just an introduction to computer studies. We generally want to know more about computers. I'm not going to make programmers out of you. I'm not going to make IT or computer science guys out of you. 
I'm not going to overwhelm anybody with downtown tasks as I would with our students. Just an introduction to computer concept, what you probably thought it was, what you know about it um, in that particular fashion. And I hope um, we shall have a smooth sail. Okay, so let me just share my slides. Please, if I see you putting any annotations on my slides, I'll have issues with you as well. So spare me that, right? No annotations on my, on my slides. I don't like that. Esther Anan Nine, please add your ID to your identity. I don't know who you are. Okay. So we are using a key text. Um, the book is um, entitled Technology for Success, Computer Concepts. That is going to be key to our engagement. Um, Sengage all the rights to these, the content of this slide and then the key text, which I'm going to leverage on. And I highly recommend it, okay? So you may want to find a way to get your hands on one. Technology for Success, Computer Concepts. We're going to begin with a general conversation on something I know you already know. So let's make this as interactive as possible. If for any reason you want to raise your hand and make contribution, please do so. One other thing I didn't mention is that those who contribute during discussions, I take notice of them as well. And then maybe reward them with some bonus marks as well. I do that. And so you see it on your um great book on the sakai as well as and when you make such contributions so you take note of all of these things also note that these are slides um that are just showing bullets of the general conversation that we ought to have okay so when you get a reading assignment go through thoroughly and then read extensively around it to be able to apply to some of the discussion assignment i may give you as well as um, the quizzes that may follow every session right okay so we're going to talk about impact of um, digital technology impact of digital technology impact of digital technology we, we just trying to be in that right um, we are zoning into the core discussion about technology and then we see the way forward um one other thing i also need to mention let me mention it quickly you probably might have tried to lay your hands on um, past content as far as this course is concerned. I'm very unorthodox. So if you try to follow Pasco, you may be digging your own well, okay? I'm a different instructor entirely. We'll be looking at some of these objectives. The evolution of societies, reliance on technology, um, develop personal uses for technology to help with productivity, um, learning, and then future career growth. We will try to explain the role of technology in the professional world. Now, if we zone in into this right um, psychology of this course, then we can contribute meaningfully. We can better understand how things are happening in our ecosystem and how we can apply it to what we do. So we're going to um talk about the evolution and um, the evolution of reliance on technology the evolution of reliance of technology and in that section we'll be looking at the outline of the history of computers we'll look at we'll try to explain what we refer to as internet of things it's a concept that exists today and um, we will also try to discover the uses of artificial intelligence and then we'll explore the impact of virtual reality. So it's just going to be um, a general conversation that we shall be having, okay? I hope that is fine. Right, now, if I go back to my previous slide, you see this beautiful lady sitting here, right? I hope you can all see her, yes. 
you know, we call her Fatima, Fatima Akhtar, you know, that, that's her name. Um, she is finishing her degree in social media marketing. Um, the fact is that during her time at school, she has learned about how to use um, technology for productivity and specifically how to use technology in social media marketing, okay? So what she did recently was to visit her school's career and counseling center and then received a list of tips to use technology to find um, a possible entry job um, somewhere as far as her field is concerned. Now, this is the point. She will be using technology with which she is familiar. She will use this technology to search for openings, she use the same technology to research the companies. She would need to schedule and keep track of interviews as and when they come up. Um, she would need to create professional online presence, you know, um, updating her, what we refer to as the LinkedIn and other social media platform, okay? This is how it applies to all of us. Um, in one way or the other, you have a computer. In so many ways, you're going to have need and use for this computer before you finish your journey in this particular program. And that is exactly what Fatima is trying to do. And I'm sure most of you relate to her. So the Fatima story is just to um, let you appreciate the fact that um, you are not alone, whether you are doing highlight health. I'm told you are doing several programs, um, lots of them. So we need to we need to understand the technology ecosystem and then we can apply it more, uh, more usefully in our day-to-day -day activities. So let's look at the first item, outlining the history of computers. It's important to know where it all began from. Yes, so in the past, they used the vacuum tubes. That's the first generation of computers. They used what we call the vacuum tubes. And over time, there was a new generation of computers where they replaced these vacuum tubes with transistors. Gradually, they were shrinking things to make them smaller. Today, some of you are using your, you are using your Samsung phones as your computers at the same time because there's something they call the DeX, just connected to a screen and you have a full-blown computer with mouse and keyboard sitting right in front of you. So gradually, 1960s, now the first generation and the next generations do not have specific dates to them because we have assumed periods within which these um, technologies came to stay, okay? So um, that is what we mean by using the first and next generations. We won't pin them down, but you find more details about this conversation in the key text when I share the document with you. Then over time, they came up with these integrated circuits and then they moved on to microprocessors. The personal computer surfaced way back in the 1980s, between the 1970s and 1980s. Unfortunately, you and I were not born by then. Um, and interestingly, by the time, excuse me, we got to meet computers when we thought we, there were computers, even in some of us, our time. It was something that had been overused in the Western world. You imagine when the first man uh, went to the moon, the computers they used to compute all of these things to determine the projection of the shuttle to get to one destination moving from Earth and all. And just barely in the 1990s, people started seeing computers and all. So some of you can recall when last computers came to your homes. So this image you see here is a typical image of a computer being used back in the day, you know, and the power of what you are, what the woman is sitting in front is, 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 does not compare even to a tiny bit of what you have in your mobile handsets. That's exactly what we are talking about here. The personal computers we are referring to are these ones that um, Apple came up with back in the day, okay? It looks something like this. I'm, I'm pretty sure that there are people in your class who at present have not even set sights on some computers like this before, and that would be totally understandable. But this is just a brief history about um, computers as far as its outline is concerned, okay? We have a concept referred to as the Internet of Things, Internet of Things. So the whole expectation here is getting computers to 
to talk to each other, not people talking to each other. Let me give you a typical scenario. Assuming you go for a jogging, um, you go for this exercise, keep fit, whatever it is. On your return back to your, say, your hostel or a hotel, your, um, your wristband communicates with um, the internet and then it informs your, your air conditioning in your apartment that, oh, this is your body temperature. And so it should adjust the air condition to a particular degree of threshold. The moment you get in there, something else triggers your heater to also um, heat up to a particular temperature because it has sensed um, you know, your body temperature and that which will match it, et cetera, et cetera. I'm pretty sure you're getting the picture I'm trying to paint. Imagine um, in the ER, they have to push um, patients on emergency to the theater. And the, 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 there is little time to conduct all of these MRI stuff, you know, you guys, who has gotten that from his desk? You're supposed to be seated on your seat who is that? I've told you, I see everybody. It must stay that way. I'm, I'm talking to human beings. Yes, Victor. Victor, you're the one I'm referring to. Don't be getting that from your desk. Hmm? Let's keep moving. Yes, I'm not smiling. So don't smile back. Right. So um, that is the whole concept of uh, Internet of Things. So as they are pushing the patient into the ER, the imagine um, the light rays, the LEDs in the in the in the hallway leading to the theater, they they able to transmit data, um, you know, um, from one device to the other. It's able to read the person's body temperature. I mean, they just put a band, and it picks this information. It's all transmitted. By the time the person gets to the um, theater, the figures are already there, you know. So it's about these machines, smart devices, talking to each other, trying to play it all smart. So we have processes that are embedded in many products, which we are referring to here as um, smart devices, and they communicate via the internet or wireless networks. And that is actually the main focus of Internet of Things. So we have a branch, several branches of it where uh, researchers are trying to improve on things. You know, if you go to some countries, at more advanced countries, they have built smart cities. These are completely different. They've built these cities from the ground to the top, trying to implement some of these technologies. Of course, we are miles and miles away from even getting there as far as ES are concerned, but it's good to appreciate this because bits and pieces of it is still living with us. And so that is just about the IOTs. Then we have the embedded computers having significant purpose. So we have the small, um, they are quite small and they have limited hardware, but they enhance the capability of everyday devices. So you should just take notice of that. So by way of just diagrams, we are just trying to make you appreciate some of these things. You know, this is supposed to be a mere vehicle. We have a wheel, we have, um, I mean, there are several sensors that surround it, all of which are communicating in one form or the other. That's what we are trying to imply here as embedded computers. They, are, they perform specific purposes. Okay, they, they have limited hardware, but they enhance the capability of everyday devices as someone we engage with them. Now, there's something interesting this idea presents, and that is the use of artificial intelligence. The use of artificial intelligence, okay? Um, the, technical, the technological use of logic and then prior experience to simulate human intelligence is what we are referring to here as artificial intelligence, making computers um, not just interpret data, but to make informed decisions to define the future. That is what AI is basically about. We are using the term logic here because there are a whole lot of computations as far as mathematics are concerned to arrive at that destination. Okay, so um, if we get into your field a bit, the Noguchi's, et cetera, I don't know whether they form part of you allied health sciences when you people graduate and all, but they do what we refer to as sequencing of genomes and so on and so forth to try to predict several things, to predict the future, the possibility of some vaccine working, the possibility of some um, evolution of something, you know, leveraging on historical data of genome sequences they performed here and there. 
to be able to even determine whether COVID is going to turn himself into something else. Now we have several variants, you know. So um, artificial intelligence is playing a significant role in all of these spheres, okay? We have several capabilities, speech recognition, virtual reality, logical reasoning, creative responses, and so on and so forth. They are growing smarter and smarter every day. You see YouTube trying to interpret so many videos, even when you've not asked it to. You see the same thing happening on YouTube. You talk to your Google handset and it starts writing things for you. Um, I engaged with the special students on campus. Their office is also at the UGCS. And I was amazed. The director of that center is even the blind man. And he's using an iPhone, not the old one, an iPhone, whatever plus you call it. He's using a MacBook. He's blind. He's not partially blind. He's completely blind. That man's office is just right down there in UGCS. You know, um, a lot of things are happening. You can, he will send you emails. He will send you texts. I wonder how he does all of that on a MacBook. And so a lot of things are happening. Um, a lot of usefulness is becoming of AI and is the new, um, the new direction. And we need to appreciate this in the conversation and acknowledge it. So that is just a bit and piece of it. We can expand on all of these capabilities. We can talk about um, virtual reality more extensively, the use of computers to simulate real or imagined environment that appears as three-dimensional. Um, I got a, an interesting experience a couple of months ago um, trying to, I found an item on Amazon and then I had an interesting feature which I enabled and the item that I, I didn't have in my hand, you know, I could just show it to a table and it could assume the post as if the device was actually sitting there, but it wasn't. One of these days, I will simulate that for you to see. It's not far away. I did it right here in Ghana. You know, yes, just through the Amazon app. And it could, you know, I could just try and see if the item, if it sat on this side of my table, it would be nice. Or if it sat on the other side of the table, it would look nice. And I could see it from it. The item really didn't exist. Virtual reality, okay? And we have augmented reality. It's another type of the virtual reality that uses image of an actual place or things to add digital information to it. A lot of things are happening. Those of you with your handsets can attest to some of these things. And that's what we are trying to, um, the picture we are trying to paint with this image you see here. So you just show your map to the street and it detects where we have one shop from the other, et cetera. So this is what is happening. If, you're coupling, if, we, if we have to talk about personal use of technology, I'm sure you have a lot of, a lot of things to say, but we, we use it in our daily lives use it to enhance your productivity and learning. You'll be using it to complete assignments, write your pro project works. Eventually, you need to acquaint yourself with all of these things. You need to be checking your emails. A lot of happenings. You registered online. Virtually, everything happened online. We are having lectures um, virtually. So technology is, um, is, ev is everywhere in our lives today. You use it to assist. We use it to assist dis people with disabilities, as I made mention of. Um, you can apply green computing concepts to daily life. So um, if you follow this particular chart here, we are just talking about the refrigerator detecting that milk is running out. And then the refrigerator will send a text to your phone that you need to get milk. It prints a similar picture to the scenarios I have mentioned to you earlier. Then the refrigerator, refrigerator will add buy milk to your schedule app without you even mentioning it. And it will prompt you then the phone will determine the closest grocery store with the lowest milk price. And then the phone will send a store an address to your vehicle's navigation system. Voila, and you get it. I mean, these are not imaginary. We are not trying to give you some pictures of things that will not happen. These things will happen. Um, I hope you are taking the attendance for me. We have 111 of them, yes. I'm still counting. Those who are coming and going, please tell them to stay. Hmm? If you come and go before the class and you are absent. So we use it in our daily lives. I've already made the mention of this, your virtual assistant, natural language processing, digital assistants, et cetera. You use Alexa, use um, Google, whatever they call it, Google Assistant. Some of these things, some of you have heard it, but you don't do it. You know, just raise your Android handset and say, okay, Google, or hello, Google, set an appointment, then yes, create appointment. Why should I call it? You give it the name, stuff like that. It works, you know, 
unless you are the type who always has internet when you are on the school's network. I don't even know why you use even a, an iPhone or a smart handset like Android and you know, you are, your internet is expensive for you. Go and throw that phone away. Right, so daily lives, we've been using these devices. I don't need to overemphasize on that. We can talk about robotics. <laughs> This one is just a conversation we are having, but you notice from the image here, the robot contributing meaningfully to some agricultural production that is happening. You know, these are things human beings needed to do, but um, a robot doesn't know feelings. A robot may not know that I am tired. And so if human productivity was um, one ton yield a day, you can be rest assured that robots can increase that pace. All we are trying to say is productivity is enhanced when we introduce technology in so many ways. And we cannot talk about that without uh, mentioning robotics. They are very useful in so many ways. And in your fields, as you may come across, robotic arms and cameras are assisting surgeons in so many ways in the health sector. Um, it cannot be overemphasized. And so maybe in some of your assignments, I may require of you to do some digging and bring out some things that are relevant to your field. We have the enterprise computing where each department of large companies use um, technology specific to their respective functions. Um, technology is doing a lot of things. We, we can talk about the assist, uh, the dis people with um, disabilities. We cannot overemphasize on that one. I'm not going to dwell too much on it. And then we can talk about the green computing concepts where we try to reduce electricity and environmental waste generated from technology. So <clears throat> basically, those of you who are, I know some of you are, yes, studying allied health and all related courses, but you are an avid follower of technology news. You will not dispute that fact. You may have heard that um, Apple has released a new MacBook and it's efficient in so many ways, which puts it above some of these Intel processors, etc. They've highlighted on some of these energy consuming stuff recycle stuff for which reasons now you don't even get adapters accompanying your new handset and so on and so forth but those are just to mention but a few these are all green computing concepts that we can also make mention of as far as the technology concepts are concerned right so let's get into the professional world where technology is playing key roles you know um there are so many technology careers um, we can list the many ways professionals may benefit from technology at their workplace. We'll look at some ways teachers might use technology in learning. This is just a general conception, general discussion. We are using some of these things for our own purposes, like we are engaging with each other right now. So um, the expectation is that you should be able to describe some of these things. You should be in a position to after this few discussions we have had, or let's say my talk, plenty talk and presentation, you should be able to explain the ways technology assists the world, particularly of healthcare, which is something I'll be requiring from you. Be able to describe the ways that technology has impacted the world of manufacturing, and then explaining ways that professions might use technology in higher education and exploring how you might prepare for a career in technology. Maybe at this point, I will take in some responses from you because um, it's a first meet. I don't usually keep long in first meets. I have barely a few slides left to finish. Let's pick one question at a time, as you can see from there. I mean, if we should ask you to explain some of the ways technology is assisting the world of healthcare, what can you say? Can you give us some facts? Don't forget, I'll be taking notice of those who will be making contributions to discussions in the class and um, I'll be rewarding them accordingly. So yes, can we get like a handful of people, five or four people to contribute? I see some hands up. Please take notice of those who are talking, especially their IDs, we'll reward them. All right, so um, who is talking? Could be a uh, money, please don't, 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 don't give me unnecessary response, speak. When you finish talking, lower your hand, okay? Let's hear you. Hey, 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 gentlemen, we have a problem. Kodia, Kodia, 
Stop chewing your microphone. I don't know what the problem is. Your network seems to be fine, but your voice is terrible. Can you come again? Okay. Oh, yeah, I'll give you the privilege to type your... I'll give you, I will give you the privilege to type whatever you wanted to say in the chat section, and then we'll look at it. So I'm going to lower your hand and mute you. Your, your sound is not looking good. Yes, who else? Um, Odro Set Kunadu. Yes. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, um, technology has indeed helped uh, in developing the world. I can give him um, one scenario that I know. Um, way back in the 1980s. You, uh, way back in the 1980s, were you there? I was not there, sir, but I found out. <laughs> You found out from where? <laughs> huh? I can Tell say from a, I, I made some research and I found out. Mm -hmm. Oh, sir, this one too is very relevant. I'm listening. Make it quick. Okay, so I heard that surgery was uh, very difficult for doctors because um, the, some of the ways and means to do some surgeries, they didn't know, but due to advanced technology, the surgery has improved. For example, they know the right tools to use and then uh, how to manufacture these tools. So it has helped a lot in surgery as compared to the uh, 1980s. That's what I know about technology. Okay. I don't know why, but I'm not too comfortable. I mean, I'm not okay, uh, but you have said your points. Right. Well noted. Yes. Um, yes. We don't have much time, so I'm not going to allow everybody to speak. Uh, Mary, when you finish talking, just lower your hand. Hmm? Okay, Mary. hello, hello. So I can you hear me? Yes, everybody can hear you. Okay, so the way um, technology has helped to assist in healthcare, I want us to take our minds to um, the use of microscope. Okay, using microscope. microscope. Yes, please. The electronic microscope. Um, due to technology, we are able to see, you know, things that the naked eyes can't see within us, whether in the blood or some um, fluids in us, using the microscope. And also, when we take our minds also to X-ray, the use of X-ray to um, diagnose diseases in us and other stuff. Yeah, so it's technology that has helped. Okay. I think I can agree. Right, who else? Um, should I be biased? Okay, so Sue David. So Sue David, you can unmute and talk. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, previously, there were problems with uh, dealing with cancer cells in individuals, but relatively now, there have been devices and technological advancements where a race can be used to kill cancer cells in delicate parts of the human body, especially the spines or the vertebral column, which, which prevents uh, really cutting the individual to remove the cancer cell, but actually just destroying it with a ray and then making the process very easy, simple, but uh, effective and reliable. This guy has spoken plenty. I don't know why, but well, point well noted. Don't mind me. Yes. Um, who else? Um, Amankwa Daniel, Oscar. Yes. I only asked one person to write his okay, comments sure. in the chat. The rest of you are writing. Yes. Okay, sir. So, so mm -hmm. um, technology has really helped in the health sector, and an example is the use of incubators to save new newborn babies who couldn't fully develop in the womb of um, their mothers. Mm. Those equipment, are they, how would you describe the influence of technology in, in them? You know, you, know, you know, the whole con 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 conversation has to do with computers, you know. Um, do they have, I've not used that equipment before, I have an idea, but I don't know how, they are synchronized. Is the doc would the doctor be able to tell what is happening when he's in his office? Is that how it works? 
or it, it works manually like a, an iron, a fridge. How would you describe that? <laughs> so not like... Um, it's not like he's doing the work. Did I just confuse when, you? When um, a baby is placed inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. When a baby you, you, have, you, have, you have also you have also made your contribution. Don't worry. It gives. Yes, you you've made your point is clear. I was just wondering, um, where that, um, sits in the conversation of technology. You know, given history about computers, you have people sitting in front of big computers talking about artificial intelligence. Those equipment. I don't know how they fall in that in line with the conversation. Um, I'll take a few more responses. So thank you for your contribution. Those of you who have already spoken. Who is here? Um, Richard Akpalu. So I'm just using what um, Zoom is giving me, whoever is on top. Okay, so I'm not trying to be biased. Hey, everybody wants to talk. I'm sorry. This is not possible. Not possible. Richard, speak. Yeah, tech, okay. What I want to say is technology has contributed to the distribution of medical equipment and drugs to hospitals and pharmacies and other medical centers with the help of drones and vehicles. Drug. And, yeah, drones. Yeah. Mm. It's quite an interesting. Um... Sir, did you get that? <laughs> yes, I, get, I got you. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm just trying to pin yeah. down some of the extracts we can take from what you have said. Yeah, the drones are doing marvelously well. Um, most drones, the last time I checked, are not able to contribute towards live streaming. But of course, if it is communicating to a computer at the other end, you can monitor events that happen simultaneously. This zipline thing we have in Ghana here, how much of the information do you know? You don't know anything about zipline. Nobody, no problem. All right. Anyway, your contribution is also well noted. Thank you very much. Um, I'll take one last person. The guys are speaking too much. Let me look for a female in the list so that I balance it out. Everybody will get a chance somehow, sometime. Um, Adelaide Yaira, yes, speak up. Please, in the case of ultrasound, now, when a lady is pregnant, where is your face? Your network is running away. Say, please, I'm here. You are there. You are there. Yes, I'm here. Okay, take what you said again. Eh? We are listening. In the case of all child sound. Okay, so Adelaide, Adelaide, type your response in the text. Okay. ID. Let me let um, Joanna speak. She's by default the next female in line. Um, okay, so say, um, technology has helped in the field of diagnostic radiography because with the help of AI intelligence, artificial intelligence, now when you make scans, you can get um, clearer pictures, images, which will help in angiography. And also the scans made can be transmitted electronically. So the doctor can get the scan made immediately and that will save a lot of time rather than sorting them out and getting pictures which are not clear. Oh, okay, okay. Right, so the good thing is that what you guys have all said is correct they are all correct they all make sense and it's good to know you have fair knowledge about this right so in our next session we'll be discussing a bit more into more technology stuff we, um, the website the internet um the search tools that we use how we can refine some of our searches and so on and so forth um comprehension of these concepts will form key to your journey in your academic field and um, to, it, should form, it should come in handy and very helpful to you. So um, that is going to pretty much go to, are you finished speaking before your face appeared? 
anyway. Right, I take I take my face back and leave mine there. <laughs> right, so um, whether there will be a video recording or there will be um, a live session that will be communicated adequately. Um, those of you who have raised your hand, yes, I, I know you all wanted to contribute in one form or the other. I can't have, if I say everybody should talk for Max, everybody will talk for Max. Um, everybody will get a chance sometime. Just make sure you remain active and then um, we'll make the necessary progress. I'm sure before Wednesday, there should be some content on your Sakai page. I was requesting for them to enroll all of you on one platform. I don't know why they separated you. I don't like duplicated tasks. It's not cool. It's not cool at all. So that um, we see it can be very discouraging to some of us because I can't be providing the same content on two separate platforms. So on and so forth. That, it's not cool. But that's another thing. Maybe, maybe, I think I know what I will do. I will add all of you. So, but, uh, some of us, we are like, we are having the, um, the two courses appear on Sakai. Mind that. The, um, Bas, um, yeah, so I went to um, the region CS student and they added the um, BAHS and um, 1131. So, like, it is appearing uh, two, two on my mind. Uh, Fine, Sakai. whatever it is, I'm going so to I'm, move I'm on everybody. I will do this. You are those on the one, you are not many, there's about 20 something. I'll move all of you to where the majority are because I'm not going to have two different platforms to enter your results. And I can't be duplicating my content from one platform to the other. I, I really don't have that luxury of time. And it's the same, it's one course code, B-A-H-S-113, straightforward. So I will get to that one and then make sure you are all on one page. I will enroll you. So if 111 appears on your page, you can ignore it because I'll do everything on the, the one with the three, not the one with the one. So that um, it makes everything easier. I hope we've taken notice of the 120 people who are present right now. 120, right? Those without their, their IDs will be ignored, like Nathan, Norte, and so on and so forth. Consider yourself not having come to class because nobody's going to search for your ID. Is that okay? Right, even though you've raised your hand. Even when you raise your hand and your ID is not there, I don't call you. Guys, it's three minutes past seven. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. Enjoy the rest of your day and um, have a fruitful week. Does anyone have any question for me generally? Yes. You have any question for me before I end the session? Anybody has any question for me? Sir, please, if you don't have a question, I'm lower your hand. If you don't have any question, lower your hand. Okay, so I, I guess these people have a few questions to ask me. Please don't ask me something I've already talked about. If you know you are going to ask me a question because you missed the first part of the meeting, lower your hand before I unmute you. Yes, speak up quickly, Michael. What is it? Okay, so I don't know whether you mentioned your name, but I don't know your name, so I would want to know your name. Somebody will tell you. I told you, I mean, I will definitely introduce myself when I start. You are late. Um, could you have money? Yes, talk to me. And you are lying on your bed. Don't you, ever, don't you ever repeat this posture again. Do you hear me? You don't ever lie in my session. Could you, do you hear me? Yes. Don't you ever join my class and be lying in bed. Please take notice of his name. And his name. I need to. I don't, discuss, I don't encourage that. They are in class. Ah, you, your voice is still not clear. I told you to give me your contribution in writing, not working well. Um, I think that was the last hand up. Yes, so I'm going to lower it. Right, so if you don't have any question for me, thank you very much for your time, your attention. Once again, like I said, have a fruitful week. Um, synchronize your emails with your, your handset so that I don't miss out on anything. Thank you and a good night.